Today for the Brew World Order, we are drinking Celis White, a Belgian-style wit beer, beer brewed with orange peel and coriander. This is like a traditional Hefeweizen, if you will, a Weiss beer. It is 4.9% alcohol by volume. Nick brought it. Would you like to read the description before we start rating? It's brewed here in Austin, which That's is right. how we do. In the tradition of Belgian beer, Master Pierre Celis, the wheat beer is like the man. Legendary... It's his original, that's it. It's like the man. Legendary. Legendary. Legend, wait for it. It's his original recipe. Legendary. First brewed by Pierre back in 1965. Whoa, going way fucking back, 65. buddy. 65. Woo. It's old school. Beatles were When you're thinking like Belgian style beers, you're thinking hundreds of years, but no, just 65. His signature wit beer sparkles with remnants of coriander and orange peel that will take you back to the true taste. The first taste made famous by the one and only father of wit beer, Pierre Salas. I'm opening mine up as. Who lived from 1925 to 2011? Holy shit, way to go, Pierre. Wow, man, he almost made it to a hundo. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna put our to longevity. So we're, let's uh, go ahead and cheers to that. Boom, 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 and let's drink it. All right, Nick, what do you think about this beer? It it mm. almost has a bit of root beer flavor to it. Ooh. Like there's a little sarsaparilla kind of thing in there. That's that coriander. Like, like if root beer actually lived up to the beer part of the name. What is coriander? Those are, I think those are the seeds from cilantro. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll remember that next time. Right? Cilantro seeds are coriander. All right. That is that true? That sounds right. Uh, that there's no way that's true. I don't know true. enough to that's disprove absolutely. that. We need a soundbite for Los facts that are just all the bullshit it you sounds fucking totally right. spew out. Um, no, no, no. It's actually coriander is uh, sesame seed uh, when you let them grow. Sesame seeds. Do you ever see what sesame they grow grows into? into? Sesame? They don't grow into a street. There's no such thing as sesame. It's sesame seeds. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they are, right? Just I'm just fucking done. <laughs> All right, uh, so so um, go ahead. I, I think it's it's it's, it's a fairly long. refreshing. I like it. Also, it, it again is very root beer kind of tasting. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with a three point nine on this one. Three point nine, not I bad. It. What's up, it. seven? Seven's a connoisseur of beers. Uh, we actually rated one of his beers at one point. Remember, he gave us some cider, and uh, we had uh, s- uh, seven's sinful oh, cider. So, yeah. I think it got a five out of five. That's right. It's, although I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't recall. Mm-hmm. If you remember, I can't remember every if you're beer watching, we've Kevin, on here. Just throw that, throw that up there. Anyways, um, I'm gonna go out last. Why don't you go, Brandon, the hard hat Mitchell? Let me get one more sip real quick. Don't make that. That's weird that you say. I that. do it already. Yeah. So why do you have to sound like that, there, Brandon? It's just how I drink. You got a problem with Why do you do always do that with your mouth? It's not me doing. The, what? 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 He anyway, thinks that I'm making that sound for you. Four point oh three. 4.03. Yeah. I'm going to take one more sip out of it. I like how he always goes down into the hundreds. Like, I'm really getting down into this thing. Mm, I sound like a chipmunk. Mm, this is a traditional German Be- or Belgian style wit beer. This is like true to what it says. This is exactly what you get from there. I know. This, this recipe goes all the way back to 1965. That's how far back this. Pierre, man, he's the boy. So I'm going to give him a brisk. Four point seven eight. Damn, Damn, Pierre! Because it's it's exactly what it says it is, and it does not does not stray from it. That's the brew word order. It's the brew word. All right, that was a weird Man. one. We've all been there. I got to do it right now. Maybe you've had too many coffees. You gulp down a, a liter of water for Farva uh, with your morning workout. Your bladder is full, but you're stuck in a meeting or you're doing a podcast and you're sitting in a traffic jam. By the way, I've shit my pants sitting in traffic. Whatever the scenario. Whoa, 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 no, no, whoa, no, that's, whoa, whoa. Don't just try and throw that that's in there. That's not a like gloss over statement. <laughs> else. Uh, I'll get to it maybe in another that's show. show material. Whatever the scenario is, the bottom line is you're busting for a pee and you have no option. You have no other option than hold on. You're in a, that kind of situation. Oh, sure. I guess podcasting, we can stop whenever we want. But finally, you get to the toilet, you can let it go. The sense of relief feels good, so good, a little too good. Enter the pegasm trend. Yes, we're talking about pegasm. Pop that sucker up there. Um, this comes from a website called uh, whimn.com. I think that just is like whammer. 
Women. Oh, yeah. Women.com. <laughs> so, what the fuck is a pegasm? A pegasm is the intense feeling, or really, basically, you know, you've all had it. You take, you've held in, you get there, and you release, and it's, uh, <sighs> the little shiver. That's it's the Austin Power scene when he gets unfrozen. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, his foot's twitching a bunch, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, Let's I mean, go. we've all had those where we have to, like, hold on to the wall. <laughs> a Reddit thread dedicated to the phenomenon begins with a description. <laughs> this is perfect for Clive to come out here. So my girlfriend recently told me if she had to hold her pee in for a while when she actually goes pee, she often has orgasms. And she feels all the way up to her spine, to her head. If she does reverse kegels while peeing, they're even more likely to happen. Giddy up. She said reverse these... Reverse kegels? Reverse. I don't know. Where you, you hold them and then you let go. Those are... I, think I that's mean, that's, all, that's just still a kegel. That's I don't just have... the end of doing kegels. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, let's try this again here. Pause for that half beat. She said these orgasms sometimes leave her lightheaded and off balance and are pretty different from her clit or vaginal orgasms. This editor writes, uh, others attest to having similar experiences. I'm sorry, now we have, this is bad because we had this sexy moment and now we, they have to see our face. I'm sorry about that audience out there. I'm sorry. Uh, who's to say that our faces don't uh, constitute sexy moments? Well, maybe, maybe we there are a have couple of, of viewers out there going, oh yeah, those guys. Look maybe we'll just have this on hair. for the rest of this, uh, this uh, story. Others attest to having similar experiences. Quote, I call them piss shivers because they're not quite orgasmic in my opinion, but close enough. <laughs> Another person comments. We don't know who he was. Well, doctors warn of irreparable organ damage. Irreparable? Irreparable. Irreparable. Got, uh all right, all right, all right. The doctor, Dr. Charlotte Elder is a gynecologist and spokesperson for the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetricians. Uh, Oster, Obstetricians. God damn it. Obstre she, obstetricians. Who gives a shit? She says, finally. Oh, this has got sexy music. Sorry. She says that while finally making it to the toilet after holding on for a while feels good. Some people describe an orgasm as relief. I, I just don't. Stop you don't there. You don't describe an orgasm as relief? I mean, yeah, I do, but not with pissing. Oh, I've never, like, I've had a lot of those where I, like, oh, because it was, like, almost painful, and now I'm not in pain anymore, and that's awesome. I mean, I guess that does feel good. You're like, ugh, but it's, but I, I, is it I, like I, an orgasm? Maybe I never I'm would wrong. have thought Maybe it was an orgasm at all. It's just like a... Oh, fuck, I'm not in pain anymore. Like, Maybe and there's all that pressure built up. Can you make that bigger? You know? And when you get... When you have all that pressure built up and you finally get a release, you just release all that pressure. We got Jeffrey Cream, your jeans, Jefferson here in the studio. That's right, baby. How have you been doing today? I've been great, man. I've been just pegasming all over the place. Why does it feel so good to pegasm? Well, because half of the pee is uncomfortable. And when, and when you, get you it finally out, do pee, it's quite comfortable, baby. Because not having pee in your body is comfortable. That's right. I think I get it. But although right, so intentionally holding on isn't a good idea, there is no denying that there are some links between needing to pee and sexual pleasure. Have you ever had to pee when you are when you had have sex, when you're having sex? You I have, like, actually, yeah. Does that make you last longer? It, well, just in the fact that it's distracting. You know, it's harder yeah, to... I feel you. What about you're you, like, hard hat? <laughs> hard hat. It, um, it, it, it concerns me when it happens. I'm like, okay, when I when I get to that point, is it going to be one thing or is it going to be this well, thing? Well, luckily, nature has got you covered because when one's about to happen, it shuts off the other. So. Oh, it's kind of like your esophagus in your windpipe. That's right. All right, all right. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, the, the train rail switch. Like, you're going this way, you're going this way, but you're not going <laughs> to both. It diverts, yeah, yeah, okay. It opens and closes. But, you know, you, you gag reflex all you want over there, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> Bottom line from? here, Dr. Elder says that, in her view, pegasm isn't worth risking your bladder 
Uh, what was the doctor's name? Uh, Elder. Elder. Like, uh, was he also in a pickle suit? Yeah, trying to sell his Mitsubishis and shit. Actually, the high sc- my high school art teacher was Mr. Elder, but this was a lady, so that's not. A full uh, now, Doctor Elder. I, I didn't read this. I kind of skipped over, but it's something we should read. Uh, a full bladder while you're asleep will stimulate your pelvic floor nerves a bit, which makes floor you floor nerves. Yeah, fl- uh, pelvic floor nerves, uh, which makes you more likely to have sexy dream, which can trigger an orgasm while you sleep or a nocturnal emission. Isn't that a fart? No, well, it, no, I guess you can emit a fart while you're sleeping. It could be <laughs> a nocturnal. I think they more mean that uh, you just your 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 creamy. Oh, jeans. you mean you cream your jeans, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jeffrey cream your jeans, and we were just talking about it for just a moment. Here's my latest composition called Nocturnal Emission. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, there's uh, like <laughs> like she said. There's more practical and more pleasurable ways to have an orgasm. In my oh, advice, absolutely. try something a little bit more old like, fashioned. I I admit that it it does feel. Like, if you're on a road trip or you caught, like, all that, yes, I agree that you've been needing to pee for a very long time and it's painful and, like, the back of your teeth are tingling and everything. And when you finally get there and, like, just the sudden rush of relief and you got to hold on to something, that's, yeah, I guess if that's what a pegasm is, but don't do that shit intentionally. Like, don't put yourself through that just for the sake of a pegasm when you could just have a regular one by. You know, sex or masturbation that's way better and, as Dr. Elder is saying, not damaging to your bladder. Like, why the fuck would you put yourself in this situation? Yeah, but sometimes you you want that, that it's a different orgasm. It's like, oh, and it's longer and it's more, you know, it's like, all right, I, I can see I the guess, appeal, and that's, but, but yeah, don't don't push but, the boundary of but it, it. Right. Don't, like, make it a habit. You know, as often as most people masturbate, don't try to pee-gasm that often because that's, that's definitely way too much. <laughs> But so, so how much would be you too could much? Al- you, you could also put a number on it. Like, what would be to too give much? yourself a pee gasm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what would I would say ever doing it at? intentionally is that's one too you, many. That's when you have a problem. <laughs> that's when you have a problem, dude. You guys, I just had a fucking pee gasm. I just Did went. You? Up, I went over there and I fucking I had to really pee really bad. But all yeah. this talk about pee, I couldn't hold it much longer, and I was <laughs> jittery, and I had to go up and go, and I was. You, you pinch out, you brew it up a bit. That's how Adam Crow says. You brew it up. You pinch and brew oh. it up. Oh. Pinch and so brew. Wow. The old Crow, pinch and brew. The old brew. pinch and brew. And then when it's ready, you, you sprout it out. You're like, ah, yeah, yeah. And then you get the shiver. You're like, yeah. Does the same. And then you're done. And then that's it. Never mind. I mean, then doesn't on. edging give the same. I don't know anything about edging. Oh, well, that'll be different. I don't know what you've heard about me. I don't know where you got that information, <laughs> but it is that's a fake lo- news. Believe me, it's fake news. It's CNN fake news. That's a story for another time. That is a story for another time. Let's go to, death to our next story. Shit. Talking about female canines. You know what they say about payback? It's a real... Well, you... I'm sure you know the word I'm thinking of. So in the words of my late friend Aretha Franklin... Show some R E S P I C T. We're gonna do something special next week. I think I'm gonna do fascism next week. We'll talk about it. We'll ask ourselves: Is Donald Trump a fascist? We'll ask ourselves that. We're gonna have, try to see if we can answer that. Listen to some interviews from people that have uh, degrees and things, Ooh, much degrees smarter things. than us. We'll listen to some of those excerpts. I'll pull them excerpts. Uh, what else are we going to say here, man? What do you guys think about the news? Isn't it just outstanding what's going on out oh, there? Gavin McInnes is banned from Twitter. Her hate speech. You get banned. You get banned. Everybody gets banned. I want to be banned. I'd like to be in a band. A band band is what a I want to be. A band band? A band band. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, man. So check us out, you guys, on emergencyexitpodcast.com. Uh, what is it, August? So August is Tell Your Friends About <laughs> Emergency yeah, Exit Podcast time. Month. So for Nick the Fashion Writer, which you can follow him at Writer Guitar, for Brandon the Heart of Mitchell, check him out at EMEX Pod. I am Los at That's Right Los saying That's right. That's correct. That's correct. See you next week.